really hard push to find a group of children who perform more poorly than looked after children. Well, if you actually have a look at Bradford, for example, last year I think only something like 6% of our looked after children aged uh, uh, 16 who took GCSEs actually gained 5A to Cs. When you compare that with something like fi just over 50% for the whole of Bradford, you can see how, how they're just not performing. This is a student house. I'm at Hull University and I was in foster care. That doesn't, that, that sort of means that any foster kid who's clever enough and who, who's got the right attitude, which schools can help them to develop the right attitude, they can do this. I think that stigma should just be dropped right now that foster kids are going to fail because, well, why not? Jason went from Hanson's school to university despite being a looked after child. That's a rarity, so what's the school doing right? We've created a guidance system in the school that includes uh, student support leaders who are non-teaching professionals working with each year team. Year team is also supplemented by a learning mentor designated specifically to that year and looks after a child would expect to receive uh, individual attention from both those people at various times in their lives at the school as and when they needed it. Looked after child Laura, who's 12, is now living with her mother and siblings. But since birth, she's moved house on average once every four months, a total of more than 40 times. If it could be abroad, anywhere in England, where would you like to be? Blackpool. Blackpool, OK then. Right, Blackpool down. Why do you think you'd like to go there? Been before? Yeah, I used to stay in the hotel. Wow. She's lived all over the country and with different foster carers. Laura suffers from mild epilepsy and she's on the school's SEN action list. Right, so what's this one say? When I'm with a friend, I like to... What do you like to do with your mates? What have you been telling me you do on corridors that makes you like for your lesson? OK. Chat in the corridors. Yeah, right, OK. Laura's unsettled background has unsurprisingly caused behavioural and emotional difficulties. Recently there has been a problem in some of her classes where she has been a distraction to others and we've now decided to make a referral to our Student Development Centre so that she can get that extra one-to-one. -one. I think there's lots of the reasons why she's causing a distraction in class are through frustration because she's struggling, struggling with her work and if we can give her that support to get back on task so that she can access her work independently then that's what we'd like to do. Right, Laura, we're going to be focusing on your maths and English because we think those are two of the most important subjects in school which you actually use in all your different lessons. And the type of work we're going to be doing is actually trying to make that maths and English a little bit more fun than it might be in some of the other areas. So what this is, is a worksheet where you've got to imagine that you're stranded on your own on a desert island that you've been cast away, yeah? And we've got a list of different things that you can take on that desert island with you. What could be pop? You need a first aid kit for your cuts or injuries. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. She's definitely improving ap academically. Laura has made great strides. Her reading age is now, even after only uh, six months at the school, she's, um, she's two years in advance of where she was at primary school. So we think things that we're doing are helping Laura. What do we always start a sentence with, Laura? with a capital letter. So we could put, what did you say, in case of cuts yeah. and bruises. Right, so what's the first letter we're going to put down, the first word? Capital F. Well done. So F, four. So what's the next two letters there? Well done. I think the fact that Laura feels happy and content about school and she feels much more confident in herself as a person. She's putting her hand up in class, she's doing things that we would sort of expect from other students, but she's now doing those things herself. And I think that's got to be progress. The fact she's got a smile on her face in school, I think, um, is really good. As well as additional academic support, Laura's invited to year group meetings with teaching and support staff. Hi, Laura, come in. OK, come in. Come on, I want you to take a seat here. Good morning, Laura. Hi, Laura. Have you had a good morning? Yeah. Good. You had some good lessons this morning? Yeah. Good, that's excellent. Right, thank you for coming, Laura. Now, the reason that you're here this morning is because we've just had a review meeting about your progress in school. OK, now, you've been attending Hanson since September last year and we've had some difficulties along the way, but I feel, and the rest of the staff, as we've just been discussing this morning, feel that you've made some really positive progress in school. Yeah? Do you feel the same way? Yeah. 
Okay, that's really good. We do know you quite a lot about Laura's past, but there are things that obviously we won't be aware of. And that's why we've put support packages in place, such as learning mentors, so that if ever Laura feels that she needs to talk about those issues relating to things that have happened in the past, there is somebody that she can go and speak to. Your mentoring that you have with Donna, Donna's explained to us that your mentoring started off quite intensive. You had a lot of mentoring support in the beginning of the school year. And that's something that you've been able to, because you've taken more responsibility in school, you've been, we've been able to reduce. Yeah. Great stuff. And are you finding mentoring useful? What okay. is it about mentoring that you like? When you have your chats with Donna about stuff in school, what sort of things do you like to talk about that helps? Um, when I, um, when I, there's something going on at home, I could just Donna so I speak to Donna about it. Yeah, that's good. And that helps to sort it out. You can think things through a lot if you do it that way, can't you? Yeah. Has Don, does Donna come up with really good advice then for you? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. You transition for looked after children is a very, very difficult stage in their life. Children are coming from a primary school where there's maybe 350, 400 students coming into a school where there's over 2,000 students. It's a very, very daunting experience. And we need to be aware of looked after children because they can get lost in the system. And so we need to you know, make sure that we've got the provisions in place. Decisions at these meetings, like Laura's referral to the Student Development Unit, are taken only after asking for the pupils' approval. And one of the things that we've been discussing this morning is that we feel that you would benefit from having some time in the Student Development Centre working as part of a small, very small group of students to be able to improve your literacy, so your reading and writing, and also, as you've just mentioned, help you with your maths as well. So one of the things, obviously, with your approval that we want to be able to do, Laurie, is set up a place for you in the Student Development Centre. Would you, do you think that's something that you'd like to do? the uh, outcomes for kids in care is really poor and essentially the older they get the worse it becomes so they do not too bad at key stage one but by the time they arrive at key stage four their outcomes are really poor so pupils like adam are closely monitored he's been in care for eight years and he's statemented now in year 10 he's got a history of exclusions and difficult behavior the big problem now being discussed at his personal education plan review meeting is his poor attendance at business studies lessons. There are positives, but there are some negatives and some barriers that are getting into your way of your learning for you to achieve the best that you can do, and you're not daft. I know that you are an able young man, but at the moment you're not showing that. The bit on the positive side, the number of incidents has gone down quite dramatically so that's so that's positive There's yeah no low right classrooms for instance you've got which out. is good the sort of areas we've looked at is adam's inability to attend business studies where he's having some problems at the moment mm -hmm. looking at ways around that finding out from adam's perspective just what he th thinks we could do as a year team to actually make things easier for mm -hmm. him and how we can facilitate let's just say a less traumatic moment in, in and out of class and an engagement with the subject which he's more than capable of actually doing. Can we have five examples from the class? Braden, a letter, a formal business letter. Second one, Mark. So what aren't we addressing, Adam? Why aren't we getting to the bottom of it? Why aren't we solving it? The work, is the work too hard for you? Sometimes it is, but not all time. Right, so we've got the support assistant to help you around that. And that's not shamefaced by using that. And you've worked with them and you know that and you know that nobody takes any notice. So that's not the issue, right? So where do we go with the issue then? Why isn't it still working? Why aren't you making a success of it? I don't know, it's like really light, Away from school and with help from his social worker, Adam can access his EPEP online and make his own views clear. In Bradford, we decided to go down a new route to do with an electronic PEP to try and solve many of these problems that we've seen where children don't engage with personal education plans. And also the professionals involved find them very turgid and dry. So we're hoping with this new initiative and with the electronic plan that this will mean that we'll have more information about kids and also they'll actually enjoy completing them. And this will enable us to keep a, a tighter uh, rein on the performance of, of each child and if there are problems we may be able to identify them early because early intervention means the prospect of a better outcome. I mean we can go back and change these anytime we want. You're not fond of business studies are you?
So you, you wouldn't have business studies. Mm. There's nothing else you'd change. Yeah. World of work. We were doing the personal assessment part of the EPEP. Um, in the past, it's been a, a paper, very dry, lots of me asking silly questions and Adam sitting in the corner being quiet. And this way, Adam can pick the cartoon character that's asking him the questions, the background, and he, he gets to fill it in himself and can go online and fill in the bits without me sitting over him, even if he didn't want me to. It just makes it a lot easier for Adam. There you are. Do you find it difficult to concentrate in class sometimes? Yes. <laughs> that was a quick one. The electronic PEP is available to everyone involved in Adam's care, and support staff can also access it online. Morning, Lisa. Morning, Mr. I've just had uh, a meeting with Mrs. Barnett and Adam uh, looking at updating his uh, EPEP. Right, OK. Uh, so I've just... Uh, we've put a bit of a support plan together as his special special needs that we could do in school. So uh, I don't All suppose right. you'd pull up, uh, yeah, I'll pull up his I'll EPEP, would you, please? Basically, what we've discussed, in, obviously in conjunction with Adam, is that uh, we discussed his business... Support uh, his business studies class. Right. Um, Shall I just put in other details? Other details will be that uh, what I've said is because he, he fails to attend regularly and he's got a mindset of not attending, that I actually go and meet him, find him to make sure that he does actually attend. So I'll put Mr. Whittingham to locate Adam and sort of escort him really to uh, class for the time being. The EPEP system is very new and early results are encouraging. For more information on EPEPs, log on to the um, Teachers TV website. I think that schools have a dual role to play, and I think we'd be naive to think that schools are islands where things aren't going on around them. It would be ideal if school only de dealt with education issues, but in fact, that's not reality. We all know there are other problems around outside there beating at the door of schools. And if we don't address them and put that into context with the school environment, then I think we'll be up to you know, a failure. Former Hansen pupil Jason, who's visually impaired and suffers from Asperger's syndrome, is reading computer software development at Hull University. He's perhaps proof that not all looked after children have to fail academically. Hansen always says, OK, so you fostered. Basically, you know, if you had any issues, you could go to your farm tutor or a learning, or a learning mentor, and they would instantly understand what was up. They knew that you were fostered. It was very good support. It was very good support. You know, you weren't ever stigmatised by Hansen. You know, basically, you had the same chance as everyone else, and you could pass if you wanted to do it. It was all down to you.